Cool. I think uh, we're ready. Thank you guys for coming. Seeing some familiar faces here. Um, so this workshop is going to be on AP Wine, on building derivatives on yield. And it's going to be split into three different parts. Uh, first part is going to be presenting the protocol itself. Then we're going to um, see how do we use AP1 using our SDK that we implemented. And then there's going to be an outro. So first off, what is AP1? Building derivatives on yield. What does that mean? We are one of the first protocols to enable yield tokenization. So basically getting your yield ahead of time. First, we need to understand why do we do this. If you were here during the DeFi summer of 2020, you may have noticed that there was extremely volatile yield, which is still the case today, right? You're seeing insane three digits APIs that are s simply not sustainable. Um, so this was the, the kind of issue that we noticed and we said, okay, there's no mean right now to hedge your risk on this APY volatility. So how do we enable this? This is where APY comes in. We're a yield tokenization platform. So basically, this is a new primitive in DeFi that enables you to split your deposit and your future yield into two different tokens that I'm going to describe a little bit later on. This enables you to buy, sell, hedge, and trade your future yield in advance. Now, we get into the more technical part for you hackers. How does it work? First, you get your interest-bearing assets. So this is like ADA if you're working with Aave. Uh, simply generating yield each second, right? Um, so this is an interest-bearing asset because it generates yield. You simply are going to deposit this into AP1, and AP1 is going to split that token into two different ones. The first one is the principal token. The principal token represents your initial deposit, the value of the initial deposit at the time that you deposit it on the platform. The second one, and this is where it gets very interesting, in the, is the future yield token. So this is the primitive that we came up with. The future yield token is going to represent all the yield generated by the initial deposit. So let's say, um, okay, who has some funds on Aave right now? Are you farming on any farms? Are you familiar with DeFi? Are you farming any strategies? Let's say, right, 5% on USDC, right? That's pretty reasonable. Now. This is going to be, if you deposit $100 on Aave, you're going to get uh, a PT that represents uh, your $100, plus the FYT that is going to represent all the yield generated by this $100. So at the end of the year, if you're getting 5%, this FYT is going to be worth $5. That's how it works. Once you get this, you can build uh, amazing strategies with the AMM that we built. So basically the FYT and the PT can be freely traded at any time on the AP1 automated market maker, just like if you were on Uniswap. So if you sell your FYT, you basically get your yield ahead of time. That's how it works. So our AP1 AMM, we iterated on a, on a few months um, and we found out the best design that you know we can trade between PT, FYT, and underlying. I'm going to show like why it's very necessary in our case and how you can build very amazing strategies on top of this AMM. Now, here are a few strategies that you could build at this hackathon and that could be very interesting to make. Um, first is the PT trading. So this is, uh, remember that the PT is the value of the initial deposit. So you know that at the end of each period, like at the end of each year, one PT is always going to be equal to one die or whatever you deposited. And using this very simple fact in the discount that is on our automated market maker, you can basically buy PT at a discount. So let's say you buy a PT for 0.9 die instead of one die. You basically made 10% APY at a fixed rate because you know for sure at the end of the year, it's gonna be a one to one ratio. You have also yield sections, very interesting strategies to basically compound your yield ahead of time. This is something that's only possible with future yield. Now, let's go to today's workshop. Um, now that we've presented the protocol a little bit, what we're gonna build today and what you can also you know, improve on your own at the hackathon is gonna be fixed rate by selling future yield. So how do you do this with AP1? Leverage yield tokenization and the AP1 AMM to secure a fixed rate on future yield. If you want to follow along, which I really recommend you to do so, um, you're going to need Node.js and Yarn uh, installed on your computer, um, as well as cloning the repository. So the repository is here, github.com slash 
slash apwine-workshop. If you want to clone it and follow along, um, it's very simple. You just need to copy the environment file and then simply install the dependencies. Once you're done with this, and this is what I'm going to do right now with you, um, you can basically start a node. So this is starting a local blockchain, like a fork of mainnet, which is what we're going to build on. And then follow the steps one to five. So yarn step one, five. I'm going to show you how this works right now. But it's been made uh, to be very easy to follow along. So first, uh, you're going to want to go into the directory and then just install all the dependencies. Here, I already did it. No need to do so. And then you just want to start your local blockchain. Uh, so run node, start node. And this is using hard hat. If you're not using it already, it's very, very uh, useful for anyone hacking on Ethereum. All right, we got our local blockchain set up. Now let's go to the workshop. I'm going to navigate to the workshop. If you have any questions on the way, uh, please feel free to ask and interrupt at any time. We're going to have some time for questions afterwards, but you know, feel free to interrupt. All right, this is uh, the preparation for the step one. So the step one is going to be um, the creation of the SDK. Basically, once you install the dependency, the, the package on NPM is at apwine slash SDK. Once you install this, you get access to the protocol itself plus the AMM very easily. The first step is going to be creation of the SDK. So SDK is equal to new AP1 SDK, and then you want to provide your provider, signer, and the network. So here it's going to be mainnet, because we're building on a mainnet fork. So how does it look? There are you know, multiple files here. Um, so in the SRC folder, you get uh, step one, step two, step three, step four, and step five. We're going to go through these. So first step is what I just described, create the SDK. Let's see how it looks. So I just run this very simply with yarn. This is how you can follow along very simply. And we're done. We initialized our SDK on mainnet in just a few lines. Now, the second step is going to be retrieving all the futures. Now, something that is a little bit more technical is that APYN on mainnet and on Polygon, we're currently releasing on two platforms, are currently working with 90-day futures. So instead of one year, like I described earlier, it actually works with three months futures. This is a middle ground you know, between degen yield and more stable yields. So this is what we went with. <laughs> all right, so how to get the basic information of all the future vaults. Uh, by the way, what we call the future is a future vault. So it's basically you know, the smart contract that enables the tokenization of this future yield. Um, you're simply going to want to use SDK Dutch uh, fetch all future votes. And this is going to give you a promise, so you know, just need to wait for it if you're familiar with uh, TypeScript. Um, you're just going to want to fetch all the addresses. And then with all these addresses, you can get more detailed information with fetch all future aggregate. So this is going to give you like the duration, which token uh, does it represent, and so on. We're going to see this right now. How does it look this time? Step two. Um, so here we fetch the future aggregate. You can also pass a specific address. If you're interested into this specific vault, you can just get all the information for this vault. So if we do it, step two, and this is going to load a little bit uh, simply because we just started our local blockchain, so it needs to fetch all the information from the mainnet. And here we can see that we have many different futures. Uh, so this was actually in the past because we fetched from a specific block in the past. Uh, we have XSDT staked ETH with Lido Finance. We also have Aave, AUSDT. So this is very interesting if you want to do something that plugs onto Aave or does something with Lens and then on top of uh, one inch. Like you can get super creative with this. Uh, we have also Sushi, Wiren. I know they're sponsoring as well. So be on the lookout. So many different IBTs, interest-bearing tokens, that you can tokenize on APY. And then you have the end uh, date every time. Now, step three is going to be getting the basic APR. So this is going to be by buying the PT, like I previously described. So basic, basically buying PT at a discount and making sure that the ratio is one to one. So you basically secure the fixed rate. This is not yield in advance. It's just fixed rate. 
which is another thing that you can do with AP Wine. With this, we just want to get, want to get SDK dot fetch spot price, so the specific vault address, and then from and to. So from and to is going to be the two tokens that you want to switch. For example, here it's going to be underlying, so underlying asset is die, for instance, and on the other hand, two. Two is going to be PT. All right, let's try this. How does it look? With the basic APR, we can currently get, uh, at the time of creation of the workshop, uh, we can currently get 35% on the staked ETH future. Have you ever seen 35% on a staked ETH, anyone? All right, so this is something very interesting that you can do with AP1, making optimized yield strategies. Now, what if I told you that you can optimize this even further? One problem with this strategy is that you are basically limited to the amount of liquidity on the platform because you are simply using your ETH to buy PT. So basically using only one pair of the AMM. But like I previously described, there's actually two pairs. You can switch between three different assets. So this is where you can take full leverage of APY's entire liquidity and yield tokenization by simply, what we're going to do right now is tokenizing our staked ETH, so depositing on APY, getting PT FYT, like I, like I said before, and then selling FYT not for ETH, but for PT. So it's basically going to go through an entire route. And why do we do this? If we sell our FYT for ETH, this is yield in advance because you get ETH, which is liquid, right? You can use it for something else, reinvest it into USDC, whatever. Now, if we sell into ETH and we also buy PT at a discount, we just maximized our rate. And this is where it gets super interesting. And this is where you can get creative. So let's try that. We're going to tokenize our staked ETH. So basically deposit on Lido and then on AP Wine, which is going to give you two tokens and then doing the swap of the FYT. First step, uh, this you can see the, the source code, but it's very simple. You just need to call sdk.deposit. Very simple to use uh, you know, with, the, with the corresponding future vault that you're interested in. So if we try this, we can see that. So we start with a few ETH. Um, actually, let me, let me see here. We start with um, amount to tokenize. It's going to be 10 ETH. So we're playing with 10 ETH here. And we get 9.93 PT and 9.93 FYT. Now, what happens if we sell our FYT for PT, like I said before? This can be done using the SDK again. So you can do anything, tokenize, swap, anything you can think of. SDK.swapin. So you pass the AMM, and then you go from FYT to PT with your amount. It can't get any more simpler. This is going to do the automatic routing on the smart contract side. And if you want, you can also fiddle with the smart contract. This is for JavaScript, but you know, we, um, I'm going to present all the smart contracts uh, later on, the repository, so you can have a look at the code as well. So this is going to do FYT, PT, and then ETH automatically. It gives a similar result, like I said before, but lower slippage because we use the full liquidity and much bigger trades can be accomplished with this. So let's say if, if you, know, you can't get 10K worth of ETH to work with this, with the old strategy, you can actually get 10, 10 times better result with this one. And it's very composable. You can use FYT, PT, ETH, you know, in, a, in any way you want. So if we try this method, we're going to go to the last step here, step five. So this is going to do a lot of stuff. Basically, I don't know if you noticed, but at every step, it does you know, the previous step. It just repeats, right? So the first uh, step was fetching all the futures, computing the basic APR. Then we tokenize our future yield. And then we finally sell our future yield for PT, which is going to maximize our rate. And by doing this, we can see that we just got 10.36 PT. Now, what does that mean? Anybody has a clue, like, what does that mean? It just means that, very simple, as I said before, one PT will always be equal to one ETH at the end of the period. So at the end of the, you know, when we made this workshop, it's like one month later or two months later, depending on the, on the situation. So this means that annually, if you annualize this rate, you know, we just got, uh, you know, 0.36 profit 
this means that you can get 34% APR on ETH, which much bigger liquidity than that what I described previously. So this strategy is very optimized. It's something that is not currently done on the platform, so this could very well be an entire hackathon project. You know, you can build your front end and be like, okay, what do we do? We maximize your APR using any asset you want. In reality, any asset that AP1 supports, which you can see with the SDK. Right, now is your turn. I hope that was clear. Um, of course, creative strategies always get very rewarded, um, whether it be through arbitrage, you know, natural economic rewards, uh, just like you're seeing on Uniswap or anything. Um, so, for example, if the, if the APY is, is very low on APY and the, and the APY is very high on the platform itself, you better buy yield because you know it's going to go up. So this is one of the things that you may want to think about. Um, you can also build trading bots, leverage yield, as I described before, you can sell your yield in advance and then reinvest it. So that's basically what we're, we're doing here. It can get pretty crazy. And what's even more crazy is the prizes that we're giving out this weekend. I'm going to enumerate these. Uh, the first prize is going to get $4,000 uh, for the best yield strategies on top of APYN. You can also plug with any you know, other protocol. For example, if you plug with Aave or any yield generating platform such as Wireon as well, you're eligible for this. It can be anything from vaults, bots, automated strategies. You can build anything you can think of. The second one is going to be 2.5K for the best integration with another protocol. So we're actually incentivizing you to try to work out a way to be plugging onto something else and AP Wine. And the last one is going to be 1.5K for the most creative strategies. Um, you know, that's an open subject. There's no really um, um, recommendations for this. So please surprise us with any strategies that you can think of. And that's it for now. Um, I hope this workshop was clear enough. Um, I'm also here to answer all your questions during the weekend. The AP1 team will be here uh, to help as well. Um, so I hope you like it. We're also hiring, so please, you know, at the end of, of the hackathon, if you really like AP1, and, and we will also love to work with you guys. So please get in touch. We will be in touch for sure. Um, thank you all for coming. Thank you for listening. We're going to get into the, the questions now. Yeah, please. Why would the PT be discounted? That's a very good question. And actually, it makes sense when you think about it. Because if you could buy PT at a one-to-one -one ratio, you know, you could buy uh, one, one PT with one ETH, then what, does the FYT, what is the FYT for, right? Because the FYT is basically containing the future yield. So you would basically be selling your, um, selling your FYT for, for a loss, right? Um, let me clear this up. You, you work with 90 days futures, right? So at the beginning of the period, when you deposit on APY, let's say you deposit 100 ETH. So you get 100 PT, 100 FYT, right? If you were able to sell your PT for you know, 100 ETH, then the person buying it w w would not be uh, very smart because basically you just kept the future yield also, right? So it's not a neutral ecosystem. Basically, just remember that always one PT plus one FYT is always going to be able to withdraw the initial deposit. And that's how it works. That's how AP Wine stays very composable and very flexible. PT plus FYT is equal to the initial thing, always. So you're never locked out. Yeah, the IBT. So if it's like one staked ETH, ETH is not an IBT because it's not generating yield, but staked ETH is because it's generating yield. Just like Aave, uh, you put 100 DAI into Aave, it gives you 100 you know, A DAI, and then this A DAI balance keeps increasing on your wallet. This is an interest-bearing token. Yeah. because they know for sure that at the end of the period, and that's determined by the smart contracts, it's always gonna be a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you buy PT at 0 0.9 ETH, you know that this 0 0.9 ETH is gonna be worth one ETH. So you basically yeah, bought like, uh, the rate. How, how and how does it work, on the uh, other hand? Why would someone sell it at that price? Yeah. yeah. So. 
there's many different things, but getting out of AP Wine, you can do it in two different ways. Either burn your PT and your FYT, so destroy them to get your initial deposit, right? So if you get like one PT, one FYT, you burn these two and you get back one staked ETH. This is the first way. Now, what if you already sold your FYT, so you don't have the FYT anymore? How do you get out? There's only one way, selling your PT. And this is why you need to sell it at a, at a discount for the other people buying it. Because you already sold the future yield, right? So it's worth less, right? Because if it expires in three months, for example, and you just sold the yield, it means that it's worth less because in three months, it's gonna be the same value. There's like the time factor going into it. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Can FYTs be discounted? Yeah, I mean, uh, are they uh, usually discounted on the AMM and is this arbitrage thing uh, the same as PT or is it more risky? <laughs> Good one. Um, yeah, the, 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 the PT FYT pair on the AMM has been made so that the weights are changing during the period. So it, it makes sure that there is no impermanent loss on the liquidity providers. And that's how, you know, this special sauce that we have make sure that uh, the discount at any time is the optimum. Yeah, exactly. It's actually very interesting to do both strategies. So arbitrage on PT and arbitrage on FYT are two strategies that can be very useful. Yeah. Now, um, yeah, I think we're, we're, we're good with this. So thank you again for coming. I hope to, to talk with you during the, the hackathon and, and see what you can come up with. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. All right, back to work. <laughs>